Hey, you all. Thanks so much for going to Eden's Bridal Shower. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we love you all, and we are very thankful for you. So Eden and I first met uh, end of 2015 when I began attending her church. However, there's a little bit of debate to that because we were both at a wedding in 2009, unbeknownst to each other. I would have been seven and she was nine. And we only found that out afterwards, but I have this memory of these three girls that I had this interaction with. And I asked her about it a couple years after we met and we think it might have been her and her two younger, two or three younger sisters, but uh, it is unconfirmed. So that is the tentative first meeting. But uh, end of 20, 2015 into 2016 is when we first met at our church. Our first date actually was there in Cleveland. I flew out in October. Uh, yeah, it was October of 2020. And that was when COVID was shutting everything down. And um, I actually flew to Virginia, saw my sister, drove from Virginia up to Cleveland to see Eden. But unbeknownst to her, she was uh, running from uh, different things happening at the school. So she uh, flew out the next day. So I picked her up. Uh, we had our first date there. We got these sandwiches that had an ungodly amount of meat in them. And they were amazing. And we went down to Lake Erie, and it was very cold and very windy, but uh, it was very special because we had been talking for months and months and finally got to see each other. Who planned it? I guess I kind of planned it because I planned the trip out, but uh, it, was, it was just kind of where we could go at the time. And it was very lovely, and we have very fond memories of our first date. Um, I said I love you first. It was on a phone call. I was in Southeast Alaska, I specifically remember, and we were on the phone, and I was sitting outside of a library in Sitka, Alaska, and um, we had a very, very long, very important talk, and we prayed together, and we exchanged some very uh, big information about ourselves, and it was just kind of a turning point for us, and I ended the call and said, I love you. Uh, I believe she said it back, so I think that was a plus. <laughs> it was in the Callahan Mountains. Um, at the time, they were living at their grandparents looking for a new house, and we went up adventuring for the day, and it was very special, and um, I could take you exactly to that spot. In fact, Eden and I might visit again this summer, just for old time's sake. There's, there's quite a lot. Um, first and foremost, I would say she has pushed me to be such a, 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 such a good version of myself for the Lord. Uh, initially, I saw her as being a little bit different than some other girls in my life and even in our church, and I just really appreciated that about her. And I just loved her zeal for the Lord. And uh, we've, we've grown a lot together, and I love that. I also love, she's the perfect height, and she's got a infectious giggle, as I'm sure many of you know. And um, I love her hair, especially. Um, probably 13, 14 year old Isaac, that's one of the first things that I noticed about her. I was like, wow, that girl's got a head of hair. That is amazing. And uh, lo and behold, here we are. And I get to love that head of hair for the rest of my life. Primary love language is words of affirmation. I believe that uh, we've really come to know that she really, really values people's, not just opinion of her, but pe important people in her life, what they think of her. Um, her grandparents, her parents, and now me as well. Um, that really speaks to her when people compliment her or encourage her. And probably quality time would be a second love language. Uh, she just really misses home and misses me, and I miss her. Um, this distance thing is it's been hard but it's been very good and I wouldn't exchange it for anything uh, I believe I do um, I, I don't always and that's not always a good thing but uh, with uh, some graciousness on her part I believe that uh, uh, our godly roles is for me to lead in the home spiritually and financially eventually and um, 
I think we will shoot for that, to have clear defined goals and roles in our relationship. Um, on this one, I would say we're pretty equal. Um, I apologize when I get upset at her and she is very, well, she's, she's quick to apologize, but sometimes it takes a phone call or two to, to come around to it, but she always does. And we always make amends when one of us has hurt the other. And, uh, so first to apologize, hmm, hard to say. Maybe me just cause I'm a little more open, but, uh, it's not to say that Eden won't apologize because she absolutely does. First to cry at her wedding, absolutely Eden. She cries a lot, <laughs> a lot more than I do. Uh, but I do cry a fair amount, but not always for uh, happy things, more uh, sad things or hard things. But uh, happy things and sentimental things, absolutely Eden, hands down. She inherited that from her grandmother on her dad's side. I would say, pff, it's hard to say. I would say maybe me, just because I, I do kind of like more goofy romantic things. But uh, Eden's got away with words. Uh, that's one of the things we started was I wrote her a letter in the very, very beginning. And we exchanged a lot of letters. And she is very good at putting her thoughts down on paper. So uh, writing romantic letters, probably Eden. Being romantic in person, maybe me. I mean, I can pick up flowers or I can plan a fun date or those kind of things. But uh, Eden's got her romantic ways as well, too. So. All right, y'all. Have a fun time. Um, I really appreciate you all again. And I don't know if I'll be able to meet all of you in person. I've met a few number of you. But uh, Eden and I really, really appreciate you. And we'll be thinking of all of you. All right. See ya.